It Film Sensei here. Today in this video, we are going to tackle one of the most requested tutorials that I have ever received. This. So I'm actually going to do a very super simple version of this and then it will be up to you to sort of play with it and modify it and adjust it from there, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to do something I don't normally do and that is I'm going to change my workspace layout. My favorite layout is the classic layout that I'm in now but for this tutorial I'm going to go to the editing layout. That gives me two really big screens and this screen I'm going to scale to fit. This is an actual copy of the logo that is used in the television show Stranger Things and I'm going to use that as a comparison to what I'm going to create. And What you're going to find is, is that it's not going to be exactly perfect but it's going to be pretty darn close and people who look at it are going to say, oh my gosh, you know, that, that looks like the television show to me. So we're going to start by creating a new composite shot and I'm just going to leave all the settings and click Okay, and we're going to start by making our text. So I'm going to click on New Layer, New Text. I can also say Control-Alt-T. And I need to have enough room, so I'm going to up this to 1920 by about, oh, 600, okay? Uh, and that'll give me enough room. And then what I'm going to do is use my A icon, clicking here, and I'm going to write out in all capital letters, Stranger... Things in all capital letters. Then I'm going to drag my cursor over it to highlight them all. And I'm going to find my text tab, which is normally where it is, but it's down here instead. And I'm going to make this 250 pixels and I'm going to center it. Okay. But most important is I'm going to change the font to the font that is used in the show. And it is this one right here B E N G. U-I-A-T. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'm going to say Benguat, maybe? Benguat? I don't know, but that's what they use, okay? Now, right now, it is sort of, uh, uh, you know, filled in white letters, okay? And so what we need to do is this little outline look here. So here's how you do it. This right here is the stroke value. And if I kind of drag this thing over, you can see how I'm upping it. Then you can see that it creates a red as a coincidence. It's red, okay? And I can kind of keep dragging it and making it bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? But actually, I can click on it and say five pixels. I want it to be five pixels. Now, it still has the uh, white letters, so I need to get rid of that. Well, how do I do that? It's very easy. I'm actually going to uh, click on this little icon which says, Make the text transparent. Boom. And now, look at that. I have my Stranger Things letters. And actually, it really looks pretty good, doesn't it? It really does. Okay, now you'll notice that the S and the R are bigger than the rest. Okay, so if I were to do this and highlight the S, for instance, and then I were to start expanding it, well, there's a problem. And the problem is, is that the S itself is bigger but it goes up right instead of down which is what happens in the logo and so I can't figure out any way to get that to go down so what I decided to do was just delete it and I'm gonna come over here and delete the R2 and then I'm just going to actually recreate these in their own separate uh, text compositions right so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna say create a new layer and call it text and this doesn't have to be as big. It can be 600 by 600. Okay, click OK. I'm going to drag it down here where I can work with it a little bit. I'm going to click on my little A icon, and I'm going to type in the capital letter S. Okay, I'm going to highlight it, and then I'm going to make it about 350 pixels. And then using my uh, arrow key, I'm going to drag it over to about where it probably needs to be. It looks about there. Okay, now I'm going to start naming things because I'm going to get confused really fast. So this is S, and I just use my F2 button to do that. And this one here, I click on it, hit F2, and I'm going to say these are the middle letters, right? That, that'll be important. 
Okay, now I'm going to take the S and I'm just going to right click on it and say duplicate it. And then I'm going to rename that R because that's going to be the R on the other side. And I'm going to use my arrow key and drag it on over here. And then I'll use my um, text icon, highlight it, and I'm going to type in the capital letter R. Okay, now it's a little bit askew and I'm just going to move it so that it looks like it belongs. All right, so now basically... That's it. There's your Stranger Things lettering, all right? But you'll notice that there are some lines here, too. There's one up here on the top. There's one over here on the right, one over here on the left. So let's create those. How am I going to do that? Well, it's going to be very simple. I'm going to create a new layer, and it's going to be a plain layer, and it's going to be the color red. So you click on this and say red, and then click OK. And it's covering the whole frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little eye icon. If I click on it, it toggles the visibility off, or you could make it visible, right? In this case, I want it invisible. And then I'm going to use my rectangular mask tool, and I'm going to draw it about where it looks like the outside of the line is. So, and I'm going to just kind of guesstimate this. Uh, maybe about that big, okay? And you can always make some adjustments on that. Now, when I turn it back on, you can see that it's masked out the whole plane except for where I said. Uh, and it looks great, except for one thing, and that is what? Yeah, this is kind of a hollow uh, line, and this is a filled-in line. So how do I go about doing that? Well, I'm going to do something really simple. I'm going to duplicate the mask that I have here, okay? And then I'm going to change the blend mode of that mask to subtract. So now it's subtracting out the mask that I just made. But if I twirl open the folder properties here and I go to expansion and I say expand this by negative five pixels, in other words, contract it by five pixels, then guess what? Ooh, it makes a little line there, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Oh, I like it. Okay, and I'm going to rename that top line. Okay, and now I'm going to duplicate it. Right click and duplicate, and I'm gonna call the duplicate the left line, okay? And what I'm going to do is redraw the mask. So I'm gonna twirl them open, I'm gonna delete that second mask, and then the first mask, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it with my icon, and I'm gonna drag it down. I'm gonna grab one of these um, points, and I'm just gonna bring it in, and then I'm going to recenter it back over here where roughly where it'll end up being. And I may have to, I'm going to use my mouse wheel, scroll in here a little bit, use my right mouse button to move it. So that way I can sort of see it, highlight it again. And then I'm going to grab with the arrow and just put it where I think roughly it will be. When I decide it looks pretty good, then I'm going to right click on the mask, duplicate it, twirl it open. Uh, oh, sorry, before I do that, I will set it to subtract. Twirl it open, shape, and again, negative five pixel expansion so that I have my left line done. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate the left line. All right, I'm going to use my mouse wheel to scroll out, use my right mouse button to bring it over a bit. And now I'm going to take that left line and I'm, or the second duplicate of it, and I'm going to call it right line. And I'm going to essentially do the same thing. I'm going to twirl it open. Bring out the mask, so I'm going to get rid of the subtract mask. And then the other one, I'm going to use the arrow and drag it over to the other side here. I may have to make it a little bit bigger because the R seems to be just a little bit bigger. And that's okay, I can certainly do that. I can make it bigger and replace, put it about where I think it should go. Uh, and then I'll duplicate it, just like I did before. Change the blend mode to subtract, twirl it open, and contract it by five pixels. And so now we have all of our lines. And if I rescale to fit by clicking here, there is my Stranger Things logo with the lines and everything. Now you can see that this has some kind of glow effects on here, and this is where the tricky part is. So I'm going to add a basic glow effect, and then I'm gonna add a neon glow just to give it a little extra kick, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to do something very simple, and all you need to do is just start playing with it from there, okay? So I'm going to go back to Effects, and I'm going to search in the effects for Glow, and I'm going to start by dropping a Glow effect on it. Oh, wait. I can't put a Glow effect on all of these. Well, I can, but that would really be stupid, because then if I change one, I have to change them all, right? Yeah, we don't want to do that. So we're going to do something really smart. We're going to create a new 
grade layer, which is Control Alt G. And this grade layer, basically what a grade layer does is it says anything that you do to me, I will do to all of these other layers that's below me, okay? So if I change something in the grade layer, I will change it in all of these together, okay? So I'm gonna drop my glow right on the grade layer and then I'm gonna twirl it open and I'm gonna make a couple of minor changes. This intensity, which is currently 0.8, I'm gonna make it 3.5. Now you can see it has that glow going on. And also, I'm good, and that's all I'm gonna do that, okay? Now I'm gonna bring in a neon glow effect, okay? So this is real super simple now. Ne and you know, in real life, you probably wanna add several glows and tweak them and stuff like that. So here comes the neon glow effect. Right away, you can tell that it's the wrong color. So I'm gonna twirl it open and I'm going to change the color to red, okay? And then I'm gonna knock the intensity down to 0.4, okay? And I'm gonna blow the radius out way out to like 250 pixels, okay? So it's pretty much like gone. And you go, wow, well, I just, I just kind of removed the whole effect, but I didn't. If I kind of toggle it on and off, you can see it's very subtle, but there's a glow that happens there. And of course on this one, it's also very subtle, but there's a glow that happens there. And that's pretty much it. That's what I'm gonna do. Now you can see that this looks very similar to that. It's not exact but it's a super simple version of it that only takes a few minutes to put together. Now there's one more thing that I would like to do and that is you can see that these letters are a lot skinnier than these letters, right? This is a little wider. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm gonna come over and on my media panel, I'm gonna create a new composite shot and I'm actually gonna call it the final composite. And then I'm gonna take my Stranger Things letters and composite shot and drag it in here and then I'm gonna twirl it open and under transform, I'm going to break the scale link and I'm gonna up the scale Y part to 130, just make it taller, okay? And that's it. So now they're a little taller and skinnier than they were originally. And to be honest, I think that that actually looks pretty good. I don't like it. Uh, it's not exactly, but I'll tell you what, if you showed somebody this, uh, they would go, oh, I know that show. I've seen that show. I love that show. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you would like to keep up with the latest tutorial videos from HitFilm Sensei, consider liking the HitFilm Sensei Facebook page, following the HitFilm Sensei Twitter feed, and subscribing to the HitFilm Sensei YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. A new video comes out every Friday, and thanks for your support.